Hello friends. Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. For truly whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. I'm happy to reach out to you today as a means of staying connected and developing and nurturing our relationship at, during this pandemic that separates us and our inability to worship together in the chapel. This is also the last week in the season of Easter, keeping alive the promise to you that Christ is risen and that we too shall be raised with him. When I read the gospel text today, one line jumped out at me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, truly, I tell you, will receive his or her reward. I think we often believe or imagine that to be a follower of Jesus requires some huge sacrifice or some great achievement which everyone will recognize and applaud. But Jesus is saying that it's nothing more than a cup of cold water given to someone who is thirsty and in need, or a hug to someone who's grieving, or a listening ear to someone who needs a friend or a word of encouragement on how nice someone looks today. You get the idea. To a person of faith, a disciple, if you will, doesn't mean you have to be heroic or given some significant recognition, like so many acts of devotion, tenderness, kindness, forgiveness that go unnoticed, but they tend to help relationships that are so important to us, whether with a friend, a family member, or one of the caregivers who tend to your daily needs. I believe that the life of faith is composed of thousands of small gestures throughout our lifetime. Except I should correct that expression because according to Jesus, there is no small gesture. For anything done in faith and in love in the name of Jesus is important for the giver and the receiver, for the world God loves so much. There is an expression which perhaps you've also heard, maybe even used, to the world you may seem like only one person, but to the one person you may be the world. When I think of all those simple acts of kindness, that expression seems to be true. There's a wonderful short story called The Star Thrower, uh, written by Lauren Isley. It's the story of a man walking along a beach and he notices a boy picking up starfish and throwing them back in the ocean. And he comes up to the boy and says, what are you doing? And the boy says, I'm tossing starfish into the water. But why are you doing that? If you don't get them back in the water soon, they'll dry out and they'll die. Looking down the beach, which was filled with hundreds of starfish, the man said, you can't possibly hope to make a difference to the boy. But the boy responded, to the ones I throw back, it makes all the difference in the world. Exactly. Because Jesus has promised to come in time to save all in love, to fix all the damage, heal all our hurts, wipe away our tears, we can in the meantime devote ourselves to acts of mercy and acts of compassion, whether they're small or large, not trying to save the world, but simply to care for the little corner of the world in which we live. Saving the world is Jesus' work, not yours or mine. We do what we can in the name of Jesus. So while Jesus has done it all for our sake, dying on the cross, rising from the dead, promising to prepare a place for us, what we can each do every day, and especially right now during this pandemic, is to even give a cup of cold water, so to speak, in his name, in devoting ourselves to acts of mercy and acts of compassion, whether they seem large or small. When I was a child, perhaps in the third or fourth grade, I did not do well in school. In part, it was because I was a poor reader. In fact, I didn't like reading. My grandfather, Kerry, father of my dad, had been a country school teacher for numbers of years, as well as being a farmer with his wife and seven sons. Later in life, they moved um, into my hometown, just down the alley from my parents. He was by then legally blind, but he still loved to read, and I, I still remember him using that magnifying glass and holding it next to the book or magazine and struggling to keep reading. I would stop after school a couple times a week, and one day he asked me to read part of a magazine or a newspaper, I don't remember which, so I did. 
stumbling along at first, but week after week he kept at me and eventually selecting books suitable for me to read. I thought I was doing him a great favor, but all the while he was teaching me to read and to develop a love for reading. And I do read right to this day. I was offering him a gift, but he was gifting me in return. In a way, I thought I was giving him a cup of cold water, and I was, but in reality, he was giving me that same cup. Don't ever underestimate the simplest kindness as unimportant, for when we do, what we do for one another, we do for the Lord. No kindness is too small, if given in the love and the name of Jesus. Important words at this time and always. Thanks be to God. Hear these words of prayer. When in the midst of anxiety, may we have serenity. In the midst of stress, may we have calm. In the midst of fear, may we have trust. In the midst of bewilderment, may we have assurance. When in the midst of whatever, may we know love. God loves you. I'm Chaplain Clark.